this is uh, Splinterlands. I have successfully logged in. I'm initiate number. So I wonder, your account has 50, 30 spirit bound cards that let you learn the basics. Learn to play. Uh, new blood, eh? Okay, great. We got some narrative. I'm curious to see how this reads. It looks like you're headed to the academy training area. Well, don't bother. I can already tell you don't have what it takes. Ooh, I have a rival. Should just put you out of your misery now. Rude. You would bully a newcomer who hasn't even picked up their first summoning card? Have you no honor? Honor is for fools and weaklings. Power is all that matters. Okay, so... I, I think it's nice that they're starting with some conflict in their little tutorial thing. Um, but this is something that is... Every beat in this conflict is getting executed exactly as I would expect. Because it's, it's mirroring, like, a lot of... Uh, a lot of, you know, fantasy school type stories where there's the mean student who's more power obsessed and and so forth. So yeah, I mean, I know this is a mechanics first game, so maybe you know, being too hard on 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 it. But still, um, definitely, uh, you know, pretty on the nose, right? Like like who says what their motivations are? Honors oh, or fools? I mean, the power is all that matters. So again, um, not, you know, not terrible, especially given the fact that that's not the game's focus, but also the art. You know, looks a little wonky. Um, let's put your philosophy to the test. Give me a moment to tutor our new friend, and we shall meet you in the area to see if power trumps all. Fine. Let's do this. You don't stand a chance. Sorry about him. My name is Professor Lorlax. <laughs> I guess he's going to teach me lore. And I teach during the Conjuration of Magic and the Art of Battle Summoning. So again, no audio. So a few things. Like, yeah, I know this is a blockchain game, so... Like many blockchain games, um, it is usually heavy on the blockchain and light on the game. And what I'm looking for in a game is, is, is a real experience, a, a thought-out experience that immerses me in the world, right? If it's not delivering an experience, it, there's something wrong. It, it's broken at some level. Um, so yeah, is this delivering on like a really rich experience? It's, it's trying, you know, which I appreciate. But I, I, you know, I think the art's a little rough. Um, like just this like green like background is not a great first-time user experience. And especially with text-based training with no audio, right? There's not not even garbled lines. Like I don't know if people have played the game Grifflands, but they would have kind of these, you know, you know, just babble that is in a, in a tone of voice or from a delivered by a character, and that would at least give like the impression. Let's do let's hit the battle button. It's hard to miss. Seeking enemy as corpses of the fallen are removed from the arena, a worthy opponent. Okay, a screen provides crucial details about your opponent in the upcoming battle. Take a closer look. Normally the timer counts down, but since this is your first battle, let's take it slow. You'll find information about your opponent here. For example, it seems that Kazak leans heavily on the death element. Mm. He used death for his five last battles. Every battle is different. Okay, buffs, limitations, stats. The battle is standard. There's no strange to change to gameplay. Mana cap. Each card has a mana cost. The cap represents the total. Type of summoning mana that is allowed when selecting your team. Okay, so it seems a lot like in Magic the Gathering. To my knowledge, right? Where they kind of have this um, magic aspect system. Uh, I don't know Magic the Gathering very well, but that definitely rings uh, like a mirror of it. And that's the thing. If you're going to be leveraging, you know, an existing conceptual base that another game has used, nothing bad, like it's not, you know, legal or anything, but just make sure you're doing it as well, if not better. Because one of the things that's a little risky about getting into a space that's similar to such a huge IP like Magic the Gathering is they have had hundreds of people spending hundreds and thousands of hours making that game as, like, fine-tuned as it possibly can be. And if you're a scrappy team and you're trying to leverage, you know, some of those archetypes, you know, you might just find yourself reminding players that, oh, yeah, like, magic is is, is fun. But uh, anyways, we're going to create a winning team. Okay, let's create a team. Team is select a summoner. Yeah, yeah these, uh, these are manifestations of duelists. Stat buffs, bring through bright abilities. Okay. We will use that to our advantage. Death is very powerful, so we hit him hard and fast. The fire elementor lets us do that. It's a lot of information. So think about your first-time user experience. I've spent the last 10 minutes figuring out this login process and then reading through your tutorials. So again, like, is there any way that, that this first-time user onboarding can be set up in a way that's actually, uh, you know, a little bit more engaging right like because like while the text is helpful and i think like you know it, it's getting me there it, it's not entertaining me right and again that's one of my big gripes with a lot of these blockchain games is they are more blockchain than game right and as a game your goal is to think about what how do i make a really interesting experience continue to deliver i, I don't know if we're there quite yet in this first time user experience in this case all there will be fire creatures which you may call upon neutral units which are not based on any magic okay splinter lines you must choose where each card will be on the battlefield 
First spot of your team is the front row position, which may refer to as the tank. Um, typically, you want to use that unit as well, protected and has a lot of health. Okay, got it. I, I know kind of what tanks are supposed to do. All right, so I'm going to do Living Lava. Okay, so this has a lot of numbers on it. Nice melee attack of three. He also has two armor, which reduces, which enemy must reduce before they can touch his health. All right, so I don't know. So again, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can do armor, where armor just takes off the top of every attack. Um, or it's like a depleting resource where it's just like an overshield essentially. So I'm not getting that information, which I believe from my perspective is the more relevant information, but maybe I'll see that in the battle. So I'm going to equip him. Only hit up the front. That's where we place our living lava. There are exceptions. Both the Holy Tool have the reach ability. Allows my later attack from the second position. All right, cool. And then I get this guy. Serpentine Spy looks like the perfect candidate is the opportunity, which allows him to take the weakest unit on the enemy team. Okay. Best way to throw off opponent is by mixing up attack types. Let's toggle off the melee attack filter now. Okay. Now let's look at some magic people. He said the Elven Mystic is capable of attacking with magic, and attack type magic is very formidable. Um, never miss and ignore the armor stat. Let's do it. Since there is only one magic unit to choose from, let's turn off the magic filter. Five mana left to spend. Rage attackers required. So this is like an auto battler. Look at the fire elemental box. You can flash and has a blast ability. There's an open slot available. Mana cap has already been reached. You have to link six spot into your team. Okay, battle. Let's do it. Kazakh versus Initiates. I'm very confused. Click Rumble to start watching the fight. Okay, so this is an auto battler, but like a weird one you prepare for a little bit. I'm a little confused. Is each summoner's buff supply? Okay, I got plus one speed. Okay, cool. Yeah, the graphics are pretty rudimentary. And each round, the fight, each monster takes. So again, this is one of those things where with free assets from the Unity, or with paid assets, for like 200 bucks worth of assets from the Unity store, you could make this look like really good. Um, and maybe it's just because the team I'm working with right now is like very, very gifted in UI and UX. So maybe I'm overestimating that, but um, it definitely seems like an opportunity to, to streamline some of that. Have a strong tank in a spot. You got it. Hang in there, tank. Got the toad. Okay, the pacing of the battle is uh, slow. So I do wonder, if, if I was you, I would be looking for ways to... Um, why did she attack their tank? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, auto battlers like this, especially when they're not like like a, like a um, team fight tactics auto battler, where they're positioning and, and, and enslaved to position, it doesn't make too much sense why... Like, so for example, like I should have told... I wish I could have told my magic unit to attack their magic unit like they did. Speed allows you to attack first. You take shield ability is doing well. Onward to round two. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to turn down the music just a little bit. Is this the phone music? Yeah. Let's do that real quick. Options. Mute battle music. There we go. That was a little annoying. All right. I'm just... Oh, man. I'm taking this guy down. Let's go. I'm so good. Get wrecked, Kazakh. Serpentine Spies ability attack table continues to impress. Kazakh's tank is almost defeated. You're doing great. Thanks. I mean, I didn't really do much, but I feel very encouraged. Why did that guy just do one damage to himself? Nice. Okay, we got him. Whoa. thought that one should have done three damage, and that guy doesn't have armor, to my knowledge. So again, that was weird, right? Like, that guy has a 3-3... Three, three. All right. Okay, bye, Kazakh. Hold well on, that was amazing. Valuable tips. Knowledge is power. The more you understand stats and abilities. Okay. All the cards have are limited in quality and have real value, so we can't just give them out. The magic internet mail address. You'll need to get the summoner spellbook to choose your own account name and create your blockchain wallet. Uh, I wish I could just play without having to like buy stuff. Let's nice practice. I don't even know. It said they gave me 30 cards. So I'm going to try that. But yeah, overall, not super impressed. Um, I, I think I'm glad they had a first-time user experience, but it wasn't very built out in a way that engaged me from the start, right? Like, I had to read through a bunch of stuff. And then, after reading a bunch of stuff, it just turns out it was an auto-battler anyway. So I just watched the battle play out. Um, so to some degree, like, I like the idea of auto-battlers. I, I, you know, I love TFT. I love that genre. 
But um, so far, mechanically, this is not convincing me that this is a really strong entry into the genre. Okay, so, again, long, long queue times. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of people playing, at least playing practice levels. Can I just do, like, another demo one against, like, a bot? So, again, like, for, for example, like, Rise Higher in the Leagues Challenge. I a friend, not ranked. So, again, like, I wish I could just... Do I have to buy a spellbook to even just play? Ugh. Items. Okay, so I did get some of the default items, which is good. I'm glad they do that. Please just let me battle, for heaven's sake. I don't care if I lose. I just want to be able to play your game loop without having to, like, put in my credit card information, for heaven's sake. All right, here we go. Create team. Recently played teams. Two water teams. Okay, bandit, debunker, Kyler, fretful. Create team. All right, who's my summoner? I'm going to do the uh, tank lady. Um, what's the tankiest person here? She just has a ton of friggin' life. This dude is tanky AF. Okay, double tap to change. So for two, we'll do some ranged. Um, I don't know. I don't really care. I'm going to do some magic people because it told me that was important. There's a river nymph. Uh, and then the elven mystic kind of sucks. So I don't really want that one. I'll do an icy pixie. I don't know if anybody has heal. It doesn't... I wish I could, like, long press to see more information. So, again, like, the UI... Oh, it's, it's even highlighting. Like, so... It was, like, highlighting that number. So, again... Am I ready to attack yet? Oh, I have too much mana. Okay, so... Let's get rid of this guy. Please. How? How? I go away. Okay, 25 out of 16. Look at this bird. Wow, that is... Pretty toxic. Oh my god, 12 out of 16, isn't it? Alright, we're doing we're doing our full full uh, metal jacket. Yes, I'm ready. I don't I don't really care. Doing a very basic where I have a humongous tank and then I'm assuming the river the river nymph is DPS. We're gonna find out. I have no freaking clue. It does seem like my class ability is getting diluted because I'm only using it on two champs versus a lot. Well, I guess they don't have much either. Battle Rumble. Yeah, this is battle is paced a little too slow. Oof, thorns, that sucks. <laughs> wow, so dead. So again, like, the battle should play a lot faster. Get some. Is it just gonna continue to auto battle out? I guess it doesn't matter, really, does it? Yeah, so I guess the armor is a just an overshield. It's not really that good. It's just heavy on life. Wow, that two thorns damage is super busted. Yeah, that doesn't feel real well balanced, right? Like, so, I used all my mana. Maybe I'm just making randomly terrible decisions. But the fact that I just get one shot by this guy, or at least just, you know, killed without even taking down one of my opponents. Yeah, because I only did one. Like, how is that... I did three. I thought that should have been three damage. Well, good job, Initiate. You got me my ranking... Uh, copy link to this battle. I wonder if they are doing the actual, like, battle in the blockchain, too. That's that's difficult, but again, it's like, what is it really adding except for, like, hyper-visibility uh, into, like, the mechanics? But that would make sense of why the battles pace so slowly. All right, we're going to battle again. Let's do it. All right, we're going to try one more. This is pretty, uh, but yeah, is this game fun? Um, you know, and, and those of you who are watching, I'll let you be your own judge. I'm going to create a better team because that one was bad. Um... What does this do? That's a magic build. That's an armor build. I'm going to go to the wizard. Minus two to the enemies, I guess. Drake of Arnak. Oh, man, I don't know. Mother gives health. Okay, well, I kind of like this armor and whatever. So I want to find... So the mana cost is in the top. So I've already cost four there. So I want to get some tanky folks. Some of the tanks sucked. So again, like, that is telling me, or at least suggesting, that there is some play to winny stuff here, right? Like, so, that's not a great disintegrator. I'll try that. That seems cool, right? All right, then I'm just going to get a bunch of cheapy range. Do I have ranged? All right, give me some cheap ranged ones. God, they're all expensive. Heaven. Zenith Archer, 13. Uh, 24. Okay, I got a lot more here. Yeah, I don't know why I only had 16 mana in that last one and not in the other one. So, let me think, let me think, let me think. River Nymph doesn't, wasn't very good. 
I'll do... I guess they only have one spell power. And that's their speed. Wow. I, I guess it all makes sense, but it's just not... That's not super seamless. I'm just going to stack as many people as I can. So I have one more four cost. Which I'm going to do with... I have one more... Oh, I have two one more two cost. Sorry. Do I have any two cost left? Uh, I'll just do the Albatross. Sure. Flying. Why not? Attack. I have no idea if that's good or not. Again, there's so much detail. Right? Like... So if I, if I was designing this game, I would say, I would be really afraid that there's, it is hard for a beginner player like me to get an easy win, right? I mean, what what's my easy win? I'm just putting my phone over here because it's just going to play itself, so whatever. Um, but yeah, so I can let this... this I'm going to probably lose this battle. It doesn't matter. Rumble! Let's go... I guess that's speed. Speed's not very good. Man, I don't know what all these symbols do. Well. I guess I gotta pay and buy a bunch of NFTs to actually be able to play this game. Which is the thing, it's like, whether it's NFT stuff or something else, is pay to win ever fun? You know, play to earn might be interesting, right? Like, if I play a lot and I, you know, that has nothing to do with the gameplay, but I just have these, like, assets that I receive. That, that seems interesting, but the play to... I mean, this just seems like... You know, I don't think I've taken out a single one of my opponents yet. And my mages keep attacking the tank, which I just don't get. I thought the mages attacked anyone. I guess I need to get one of those, like, guys that, like, snipes them. I don't know, this is kind of dumb. The unicorn of death. Why am I doing no help? I want a long press and see, like, what the hell. Okay, unicorn mustang. Tap a stat. So that's their speed. That's their attack. Oh, I thought that was defense. Okay. But how am I doing reduced damage from magic attacks? Oh, well, that'll do it. And this monitor has declared all positive status effects. Oh, God. So why couldn't I... Why can I more easily view someone else's go? What the frick? Oh. Okay. Just bounce some over I guess that was a tie? We'll call it a tie. <laughs> and I'll do one more, but this is uh, not looking super great. Uh, for my perspective. Then I'll summarize kind of my thoughts on this. Recently played team. So what if this person played? Macrosi Nexi. Come on, let me see their cards. Gracious of almighty. Alright, so I guess fire is good against those. Or at least it was good against the last guy who played a lot of death magic. <sighs> so let's do my tank. Living Love. I'm just going to build whatever the tutorial told me to build. I'll build another AD guy. Radiated Brute. Radiated Scorcher. Uh, Disintegrator. Parasitic Growth. I like the art for that. Hmm, we'll do this Tinyani Striker guy. Two damage seems pretty good. We'll just do the same thing we, we tried to do in, like, the, in the setup, right? Um, so what was the one that, like, attacked? I want to kind of just be able to, like, long press. I really want to be able to see, like, how am I supposed to play if I can't see what these freaking things do? Um, 21 of 18. I already have too many. Come on, man. Alright. So I, I need to get a 3 cost unit here. So I'll do this guy, and then I'll get a 1 cost magic unit if I have one. I don't. So I'll just get a 1 cost of anything. Any 1 cost. There you go, Radiated Steve. There you go, Steve. Alright, we're doing this thing. Let's go, opponent. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of waiting. Okay, so this battle is going to play itself. So I can go ahead and summarize my thoughts on this game uh, now. So uh, yeah, overall... Okay, so I'm a new player coming into this. My first time user experience was relatively weak. Um, you know, I, I have to... Uh, rumble. Here we go. You know, I have to jump through a lot of hoops to even kind of get this playable. Mercs. I don't know what's going on. A lot of the communication isn't clear. So I think about like the games that are doing this well, right? Did I just lose a guy? I don't even know. Okay, why is he attacking the guy with thorns? <laughs> so dumb. Oh, I finally killed. That's all I wanted. I wanted to kill one of my opponents. Um, yeah, thorns seems like super overtuned. Okay, that guy gets another hit. That guy takes him out. Well, at least this, like, flaming, like, demon guy is, is helpful. Wow, that is a lot of damage. Poof, and he's dead because of thorns, dumb. Because freaking, why isn't this guy attacking? Is it just because he's in the back? Back to battle. 
Alright, we got one. Oh wow, it didn't kill him. That's good. But he's gonna die now. Come on. Oh, it's not gonna be enough. Damn. Why did that only do one damage? He has... Oh, he has a one. I thought that was a three. Keep on... Okay, so like the so like the UI is not very good. Like, I don't care about speed. I care about damage and health. And the fact that those are not the easiest to read and see numbers on a card is indicative. Maybe I just don't get this game. But it, it's, it's... You know, the thing that I would say... It's always thinking about, hey, does this team... Are they asking the right questions to eventually make a good game, right? This is not a good game right now. It's a... It is a game. Um, but, but it's more of a blockchain mechanic system, and that's fine. Like, you know what, hey, if you need to, you know, get your funding or whatever by moving into the blockchain, hey, you know, power to you. However, does this team have the potential and the foresight to make a good game? The answer I would say is no, right? Uh, the reasoning is, is like the first time user experience, the most important thing, the most important thing is the first time user experience, right? The second I come to this game, they, they did some streamlining, right? Like they gave me, uh, you know, a temporary wallet, they gave me some of these things, but I know because... But I know, because I'm building a blockchain game, that there are a bunch of services and tools out there that can give you that authentication layer, that auth your player in, they give them a temporary wallet, and then they can join that wallet in to their master wallet, or they can just claim that wallet. So you can still, you don't have to make, like, I don't know, just look, what is it going to make me do to buy a spell book? Please don't pay 10 bucks. So it's like, you know, you, you, you know it's not a free-to-play game. You just have to pay 10 bucks to play this game. And unfortunately, the free-to-play elements were so, for me at least, unimpressive that I would never pay $10 to play this game. Um, both because I don't believe the assets I would accrue are going to ever be worth very much because it's not a strong gameplay loop. The reason that those assets will eventually become worth something is become the, because the gameplay loop is really engaging, right? But the problem is this is an auto-battler with none of the dynamism. Like, auto-battlers already struggle with pacing and speed, and that's why they have that shop that comes up and items that come up. I mean, if you've played TFT or Auto Chess or any of these things, they're, you know, most of the tools and all those decisions coming after each turn are, are critical to making the battle dynamic. So really, like, you make one set of decisions in three minutes based off of player's history, and then that's it. You just play. Uh, and, and so to some degree... There's no ongoing dynamism within a battle loop, right? So I really just set it and I just put my phone down, which is, I guess, okay for some players. But for someone like me, I, I, I just don't see the, 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 the good of it. Like, you know, that, that doesn't seem like a fun mechanic to me. Um, in terms of, like, the NFT mechanics, you know, I could go through and, like, try to say, oh, hey, how interesting is their, you know, offering and what blockchain are they using? But the problem is the game is, is, is uninspired, so I don't want to check. Right. And I think and also the UI was really poor. So let's say I really like, you know, hands off auto battlers. Right. Because this isn't a real this is almost an idle game. Say I really like idle games. Valid. Valid. I can really like idle games. That's that's OK. There's a lot of people that do. Um, but the UI is so muddy and there's so many stats that I don't need to know. Like like, for example, speed is one of the most highlighted stats. But from my play, I didn't feel like it was that important. Very difficult for me to, like, this is my battle log. I want to go through my cards. Maybe it's my items. Can I actually investigate a card here? Okay, you don't own this card. Okay, I don't care. I just want to be able to, like... I oh, Can I just look at what the stats do? So the inability... I, I want I want so badly. I want so badly to be able to click on that little ninja symbol and see what the heck it means, but you're not even showing me relevant information for me. Like, as... Let me tell you, as a, as a player, the thing that I want to do before I put a dime into your game is to use the default deck you gave me and do pretty good in one battle and think about strategy. Was I able to get there? No. Like, the magic mechanics work differently than I thought. Like, they did skip armor, but they also did not attack, like, a lot. Like, they didn't attack a random unit. They just attacked a tank, which I didn't realize that was going to happen. So yeah, there's I mean I could there's a lot of things that I think are, 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 are problematic maybe or risks for the developers to think about. The two largest are like the UI needs an, uh, needs a lot of work and the information you're giving to the player is way too much, right? Like there are this is S rank, okay, cool, but there are one, two, three, four, five numbers on this card. No, and these ones have six and a status effect that I cannot see. I can tell you won't let me see what it does. Rent? I don't want to freaking rent a card. Are you kidding me? Well, I can see the prices, at least. Let's see. Deck for So they have their own bespoke coin. Ugh. Lore. Not la la, but most of the time. I don't know if it's gravity as expected, but the stuff that comes from every core of multi-mountains. 
There's just something special about it. So again, I actually like the little lore. Whoever they have that's like slaving away and writing all this stuff is, is, is interesting. Uh, is doing an okay job. I, I do believe the intro still needs a lot of work. Um, and the um, first-time user experience, really, really problematic. And, and also like the narrative side, right? Because yes, this is a competitive game. Narrative doesn't matter that much. But if you are going to include it, make sure it's it's pulling me in in some way. Like, I mean, that narrative was... Was, was fine. It was, it was net neutral, right? Like it was, it had some conflict, some kind of interesting intro to the world, but then also, you know, there wasn't really much new it was bringing, so it didn't make this game feel unique or different or distinctly interesting to me. So I'd say intro was net neutral on the narrative side. It was poor on the actual mechanic familiarization side. I, I still don't, I still, I've played this game for 32 minutes. I still don't understand how I would put together, and maybe I'm done, totally valid. I don't understand how I would put together a deck to actually win a battle against another novice, right? Like, I would just kind of be still picking at random, mostly because even when I go through my gosh darn items, I cannot see what they do, gosh darn it. That's crazy. Okay, that has an eye and a little face. What the flip does that mean? Do I just have to go back to some sort of, like, text thing to see this? Um, question mark? Tutorial intro. Oh, wow, yeah, that's that's problematic. So there's just a bunch of JPEG. Uh, tap on an ability to learn more. I'm tapping. Okay, targets the last monster of the enemy team instead of the first monster. So in case that's like assassin. So again, again, this is, has a lot of the um, has a lot of like the the systems from a normal auto battler. But um, but man, the execution here I think is is concerning. I would say uh, with this game, I would rate it probably about a four out of ten right now, right? Because this is. They're, they're willing to charge me money at this point, and it is, does not feel like it's ready to to charge an honest fee for this for this project yet. And, and yeah, maybe there's something I'm missing, but for me and my playthrough experience, I would not further put, I would not buy my spellbook, right? I would say thanks, but no thanks. Um, interesting project, but not for me. I, I think you have to fix the UI. I think the they have to streamline the mechanics. There is so it's just too muddy. There is too much stuff going on, uh, and it's too slow. Like when I get into a battle, I'm just watching this very non-visually interesting combat lethargically take place and maybe that's because you know i don't know if you're like trying to actually do like you know some of these game, the companies like affinity and they're trying to do processing in 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 the, in the blockchain which is really cool but um again um you'll never be able to explore that full potential and from my point of view they're not able to deliver on an interesting game mechanic remember it's a game first and uh right now it still feels like this is leaning into some of the foibles of a lot of other blockchain games which is it's blockchain first and and, and honestly um if you're trying to enter that space through gaming, you know, really lean into the gaming side would be my encouragement. But overall, I think it's a cool project. Um, I liked the lore kind of things they had on the cards. I, I would have honestly read more if I had time. Um, but uh, but yeah, beyond that, I think the mechanics were pretty uninspired and um, not very clear and very muddy. There's a lot. Of, this is like a kitchen sink. There's a lot of stuff thrown at it, and I don't know if I could easily get to a place where I would feel confident winning. Like right, like that's what we all want. Oh, hey, I want to understand the strategy enough to go in, have a battle, see what went right, what went wrong. Uh, that's, from my point of view, uh, not possible for the vast majority of players unless you're, like, you know, really committed to this game because of the blockchain elements, potentially. But for me, that's not going to be enough. And for the general audience, that's not going to be enough. Uh, for a blockchain audience, maybe, because they're, you know, not just using this for, um, they're not just using this for, um... You know, entertainment. They are using it to maybe make a profit. But um, even if that was my goal going into this game, I'd be a little bit nervous because, uh, from my perspective, there seems to be a little bit of a gap there as well in saying, hey, do I – I don't – I won't invest in an asset I don't, if I don't think other people will be excited about it. And the game mechanics are, are, are overdeveloped in some ways and underdeveloped in others. They are overdeveloped in volume of mechanics. They are – poorly developed in terms of simplicity streamlined a single clear thing that's happening um and that's the thing man like you have to trim you have to trim so much in the card game i'm building right now um it's all like we're retooling our set our card set again because we're just like we only want two modifiers we want something really simple really accessible and and, and unfortunately this is not very accessible but i hope this is helpful and for the game developers watch this i hope this helps you know um give uh you know at least a perspective on hey you know why was my playthrough not as engaged as maybe someone else's um but yeah it's a interesting project overall but uh but yeah some concerning things early on uh usually mean more, 
you know, if, if early in this game launch, if, we're, if, if players are not, or if the uh, developers are not hyper-focused on fixing some of these gameplay issues, uh, I worry that they're going to compound rather than reduce. Um, so, yeah, and, and from my perspective, those issues seem pretty core to the mechanics that, that have been set down. So it sort of feels like we're a little, it, there might, we might be too late with some of these mechanics. Maybe their blockchain technology can sell and have some sort of uh, revenue upside there, I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but in terms of, like, the raw game mechanics, um, I would say this one still needs some work. Anyways, have a great night. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.